Hi, welcome back to another video from Two Pondering Pagans. I'm Rook. And I'm Salon. Today we'll be doing our first video on animals. Super excited to do that, and we are doing this outside in the pool because of the animal we chose. <laughs> All right, roll that intro. series of video shorts we will talk about spirit totem and power animals. We're going to introduce a few common attributes to you and then talk about spiritual connections. Although this is a complex subject we'll start by sharing with you three different ways animals are often seen spiritually. As spirit animals universe usually shows them to you or brings them to your awareness through appearances or thoughts um, and meanings that go along with the universal energies deities and ancestors the way they want you to take note and work with this animal. These change often. As totem animals, although they don't usually change as much, they can. Totem animals are representations of our own spirits <coughs> in alignment with animals around us. It's usually a much deeper connection. As power animals, this is when you call upon your experiences and thoughts of animals based on what they represent when you need a boost of something um, that you're doing or feeling or working with. With that out of the way, Please know that there are many different interpretations of what I just mentioned, so don't lock into these meanings. Work with the animals in any way that feels <clears throat> right. We are just giving you an introduction to the ways in which animals can guide us spiritually and give us direction. So let's start with our first beloved animal, the otter. Otters have been around for at least 5 million years based on early fossil remains. They are carnivorous animals <clears throat> that are semi-aquatic, aquatic, or marine. Male otters are called dogs or boars, while female otters are called bitches or sows. Otters are related to badgers, mink, weasels, and wolverines. They can range from 2 to 6 feet in length and can weigh between 10 and 75 pounds. 13 species are known, with many more unfortunately extinct. Most live in freshwater rivers, lakes, and wetlands, but there are also sea otters that live in the Pacific Ocean. Otters have webbed feet and strong tails, making them great swimmers. Their nostrils and ears close while in the water uh, to keep the water out. Otters have the densest fur of any animal, sometimes as many as one million hairs per square inch on some areas of their body. Most otters come ashore to give birth in dens called holts or couches, while sea otters give birth in the water. Um, in water, a group of otters can be known or referred to as a raft. When napping, sea otters entwine themselves in kelp to keep from floating away. Sometimes they even entangle their feet with other sea otters so that they stay together. Otters can create tools from their environment for play or to use for protection. For small creatures, they do eat quite a bit. Otters can consume up to 20% of their body weight daily. They mainly eat fish, <coughs> crayfish, frogs, and crabs, and can live up to 16 years. That's crazy. So, let's talk some spiritual meaning. We'll start with the Wildwood Tarot, which shows the otter as the page of vessels, as in cups related to water. Other resources tend to make sense, referring to the otter as the live, love, and laugh of the animal world, as they love to play and enjoy life, but also <clears throat> community. They're also private, so there's a balance to that process. On the wheel, the otter is one of the, uh, I'm sorry, the otter is on the time of the approach of Samhain, so interestingly, the otter's shown up a lot for me lately. And it's in the right time of the year. So I haven't actually worked with the otter um, mm -hmm. personally, but I'm and, and very excited to kind of dig in and dive into that. Otters are equally at home on land or in water. I am an earth sign with a heavy water personal influence. 
And so one thing the otter can do is move between these two areas, or as the Celts knew and revered the otter's ability to go between the worlds. It is at times listed as one of the oldest animals in the story of the rescue of the child god Mebom. Mebom? Some key points and phrases that um, describe the otter. Loyal devotion. Sense of fair play. Profound understanding of the underworld. Shares and applies self with intuition. It's a reflective mediator, but can be an emotionally vulnerable too. Easily swayed or at times even absorbed in their own troubles. Otters contemplate with considerate heart and serve with love. Sometimes, otter doesn't listen. <clears throat> think of, when you're thinking of the otter, of meditation, forgiveness, and blessings while having a little bit of fun. Fun. Otters are also closely related to Earth, as these two energies complement each other. Because of this, otters are aware of the deep subconscious mind and emotions along with psychic vibrations. If you've become too serious or too anxious, the otter brings your inner child back up to play. Sometimes, when the otter shows, it means that you are somewhere near you is an emotional turmoil. An otter is a reminder that this is temporary. <clears throat> it may also mean a time of needing to explore the feminine mysteries and medicine from the eyes of a helpful, sensible guide. Adapt. As the otter does, bask in the sun and settle before going back into this turbulence. So for me, I'll be working with the otter for a bit. So one way I plan on doing this is through meditation, uh, but also through crafting. So I'm working on a craft or messenger style bag, foraging bag, that I have named the otter bag. It is going to serve as kind of like an all-purpose magical bag to keep my witchy findings and things together from when I'm away from home. I kind of liken it to a crane bag, but for my current state. So. I am calling upon the wisdom of the otter to help me through difficult and stressful situations by thinking of different ways to approach the difficulties with consideration and loving thoughtfulness while serving those around me. Druids, very important here because they spent time watching the otters play and work from the riverbanks while resting, calling to the local deities. It is said that the otter taught the druids where to fish and provided secrets to the river and also included the ebb and flow of the tides and thus life itself. As the otter is considered a feminine energy appeal to the emotional strength and imagination. Use your imagination to picture swimming, swimming through the water on a moonlit <laughs> night, just experiencing what life is. Just as water is flowing over you and supporting you, so are the worries flowing away and the souls and ancestors supporting you now. This is freedom and energy that you can plug into your aura surrounding you. Otters can also help you find your own unique mystical qualities and protect you on that journey. <clears throat> so the three things we mentioned at the beginning, as a spirit animal, pay attention to and be receptive of emotions within yourself and others nearby. Let worry loose. As a totem animal, your goal in life is um, pleasure through nurturing others and having fun while you're doing it. So providing for others and helping them through things while having a little bit of fun. And then as a power animal, You'd want to call on the otter when you need to have some joy and humor brought back into your life, much like many of us right now. Next, I'm going to share a quick otter invocation with you. A furry otter in the sea, I seek your wisdom, hear my plea. Playful pup on the land, teach your conviction with a softened hand. And as you travel in between walking worlds that cannot be seen, swimming in the water flows, fair but firm, my spirit grows. There you have it our first discussion on how animals help us in our spiritual journey. I hope you enjoyed this discussion and learned something about the otter, and we look forward to sharing more with you soon. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe if you want to see more. And blessed be. Blessed be.